know me, thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. Um, you know it's been a little while since we've been trying to get together to have this conversation. And as you know, I've been wanting to start this series for a little while now because here on my channel it's all about motivation, inspiration, and helping people achieve the best version of them. And so one of the things I've been thinking about, as you know, is to start a small series that really highlights female entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of young females out there who are looking to start their own businesses and sometimes it can seem like a really daunting task. And I wanted to sort of take some time to highlight that. Yeah. And as, a, as we spoke earlier, I was talking about the fact that yes, the US elections are over and now we have the first female vice president and of course she happens to be a person of color. Exactly. Now, I know that this isn't specific to be about people of color, but definitely I think it's it's the first female, first female president, I think it, or vice president. Yeah. I think it's a great way for me to start this, this series. So, um, you know, I know a little bit about you, but instead of me taking up all this airspace, I want you to tell the viewers about who you are, what you do, and then we'll get into the rest of the conversation. Sure, of course. So thank you so much, Kevin, for having me. Um, it's always a pleasure to to have these conversations. I really, I really love being a part and being able to give back. So thank you so much. Um, my name is Naomi James, and I am a mental performance consultant. And basically, what I do is that I work with performers, and I help them to either elevate their performance or overcome obstacles. So. Those are primarily sort of what my goals are when I'm working with someone. Now, when I say a performer, um, it's a very broad term. And so what I'd like to kind of clarify is what I mean. And when I'm talking about performers, I'm really talking about anybody who is looking to excel or get better or become the best versions of themselves, like sort of you're hoping to do on, on your uh, series. Um, and primarily, this is definitely with athletes. Um, I was a former athlete myself, so um, that is my area of expertise. But interestingly enough, performers is way more broad than that. It could include um, high performers in terms of like people at the highest levels of whatever it is that they're doing. It could include musicians, um, performing artists. It can include um, people looking to give speeches. It can include people looking to become more physically active. Um, we work a lot sometimes with people who are looking to uh, rehabilitate in terms of like physios and ironically and most interestingly with businesses. Okay. So we really utilize what we call mental skills. Um, this is all based off of um, sports psychology uh, research and we utilize these mental skills in order to help these performers overcome any hurdles that they're experiencing or again to elevate their performance through the use of mental skills um, in order to become their best selves. So that's kind of a breakdown when talking about performers and what we, you know, what we kind of do as mental performance consultants. Um, ironically enough, you see us a lot in businesses now. It's happening more and more, um, but it incorporates encompasses sorry a lot of different people yeah i was going to say that because i know when we first started talking and you're you know talking about sports psychology mm -hmm. you know just because of the title in and of itself it sounds obviously it's very specific only the sports but yeah. you know as we've talked i've seen a lot of crossover to things that you could use in everyday business right i mean yes. i know we've talked about you've talked about goal setting mm -hmm. right and stuff like that so yeah. those you don't have to be an athlete to, to worry about goal setting we you know you talk about you know performing under pressure yes and performing under pressure as an athlete i think we can all understand and the big lights and the big fans and everything mm -hmm. but in business maybe it's a big sales pitch you got to do to a potential client yeah. so working on on how to sort of control yourself from the anxiety and all those types of things it's definitely interesting to see how there is that that crossover right mm -hmm. yes. so i was watching an interview with you the other day yes on right way basketball yes. and there was a there was a term that you used and i swear i had to stop the, and i had to go to another another tab open up and 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 type in maladaptive uh perfectionism, perfectionism. Yes. and i was like wow i've never heard of that term i mean i've heard of perfectionism yeah but when you start to understand that there are, I guess, different levels of perfectionism, can, can you do me a favor and just kind of enlighten me a little bit more about what that is? Yes, of course. So you can either be adaptive or maladaptive. And what that means is, yes, you have perfectionistic tendencies, but you use them in order to further yourself, mm -hmm. right? Like tweaking little things here and there. Maybe it's like practicing a speech over and over again until you feel like you've gotten it down, right? right? But then there's the other side. And ironically, this is 
sort of where my journey started. Mm -hmm. Um, But maladaptive perfectionism is really not being able to adapt. And it actually has the reverse effect of what you want it to do, right? So maladaptive perfectionism could stop you from um, doing what you really want to do, putting yourself out going there. Going exactly where I want to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, literally, <laughs> yeah. like, let's talk about even social media. Like, if you are mal- if you have maladaptive perfectionism, if your post is not perfect, or we're on the podcast right, right now, yeah. right? Like, if I w- had... If I was demonstrating maladaptive perfectionism right now, I would have been like, okay, cut, cut. We have to redo that because yeah, I, I screwed up on yeah, that word. Right? Or, like, yeah, or I'm yeah, stuttering yeah. and you know what? Like, that's fine. But that's really an example of maladaptive perfectionism, like at its core to be right. like, I'm not going to do this because I'm fearful that it's not, you know, going to be perfection. It's not going to be exactly what it needs to to be Mm -hmm. in order for me to feel like I've put my best foot forward. So there's actually two sides to it. And it's all about how you adapt once whatever has happened has happened, Mm -hmm. whether it be a mistake, whether it be, you know, your best effort right now. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like you felt like you could have done better. Like at some point you have to just be able to take it and and go and take it and learn. See, And the reason why I I wanted to sort of touch on that was because again, we go back to, a lot of individuals who want to start a business. Yes. And I mean, I've been there. Yeah. You've been there, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes we we overthink the very smallest of things. Now, there's nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with obviously having a desire to do something really, really well. Yes. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. And I think if you actually care about your craft and yeah. want to do it well, you should have some level of perfectionism, if you will, mm-hmm. because you don't want to just put out trash. You want to put out something that's meaningful and represents that you've put in a lot of effort behind it. Right. But I think it can also get to a point, as you mentioned, is that you overthink things so much that it actually stops you from doing it. Yeah. And, you know, on one of my other videos I talked about, just do it. Like, don't worry about everything being perfect. Setting up for this for this yeah. <laughs> conversation, yeah. I was you know I was setting things up with the cameras and with the audio, and some things were, were weren't perfect, and the lighting was this. And sometimes you just say, you know what, just do it. Now, of course, you you want to do it to the best of your ability, but I think a lot of us as young entrepreneurs, we we can hold ourselves so far back because of little things. And I was just trying to get that tie together between the maladaptive yeah. perfectionism yeah. and the fact that some of these things can stop us. And we yes. don't realize, we think, oh, it's just, I'm just being a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. But it's to the point where it's actually stopping you yes. from doing and yeah. achieving what it is you want to achieve. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Honestly, like, it's so funny when you talk about like businesses because I remember when I was first starting my uh, social media page, mm-hmm. I was so like, I had so many ideas about what I wanted. And, like, they either, they always say, like, um, you know, a year from now or, like, day one. I don't know the exact term, yeah. right? But it's, like, every single time I would look at people doing the things that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And then I thought I'd wasted another whole year thinking about doing it instead right. of just doing it. Mm-hmm. To the point where people would come out with, like, similar ideas to me. And I would be, like, I thought of that, like about six months ago (laughs) and I just didn't do it right and all because I would be nervous about um you know like oh am I doing it the right way like does this does this post like you know is it the way I need it to be how's my message getting across right it's just kind of like okay I can easily just post what I need to post Mm -hmm. and continue to look back at my posts and adapt as I go obviously the more you do something the better you get so regardless of what it is, right? Mm-hmm. If it's if it's your craft, if it's your business, if it's your social media page, right? Like you're only going to continue to get better so long as you're continuing to adapt right. your strategy or your business or mm-hmm. whatever, right? So there's always a way to keep going. But I think it's so common for people to just kind of be like, okay, yeah, one day. Right. You know, it's like, it, that's what it is. It's one day or day one. Because right. I've been that person to sit there and then a year later still be in the same place that I was. Yeah. And then thinking I could have been a year ahead. Right. Had I just started. Yeah. Right. So, so what was it that really, you know, a lot of, a lot of people that want to go to school and then it's, if I go to school, I'll get this degree and then I can work for this company and work for the man or whatever the case is. Yeah. But you obviously chose the route to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Why, why did you choose to, to be an entrepreneur and go that route? Because we know it's not easy. 
but but what what made you what was the decision for you that was like you know what i want to take this on for myself and be my own boss you know what it's it's so hard because i think that every like you have to be who you are right Mm -hmm. and and what i mean by that is like some people are totally okay with working a nine to five Mm -hmm. right some people are totally okay with like going to work, commuting in the morning, doing that stuff, coming back home, like making dinner, you know, and and honestly, kudos to them. But for me, it just, I've worked a lot of jobs Mm -hmm. um, and none of them ever really brought me any passion. Like I wasn't overly excited to be able to, you know, go into work or go into the call center or go right wherever I was going. And, and like, I also noticed that nobody really had as much of a best interest for in terms of like what I wanted to do Absolutely. than me, right? Like Absolutely. I knew from when I went to school and again, we'll get obviously we're getting to that later, but like when I went to school, like I was just thinking like how crazy it is that nobody knew what what mental performance consulting was or even right. sports psychology. And then I'm thinking, well, if nobody knows about it and I have the, like I'm now learning about it like why don't I deliver this like mm-hmm. why don't I get to wake up every morning and do what would actually drive me and do what would make me like what would really make me feel very fulfilled like right. I've always wanted to help people I've always known that mm-hmm. um, I didn't know how um, and then again just tying that in with working for other people and then you know needing like my own schedule and needing just time to be able to do different things and it just didn't really work, you know, even working part time and then trying to do it on the side. It was like it would always conflict. And I mean, of course, in school, it was very important. But after school, I was just kind of like, no, like I knew that I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to create my own hours. And honestly, my days are really crazy mm-hmm. um, sometimes. But that's the fun of it. Right. Like, I love that no day is the same. Let me just pause there for a second, because I think, you know, I, I've started businesses before, too. Yeah. And and. The one thing we always think in the beginning is be my own boss, wake up when yeah. I feel like it, yeah. go on vacation when I feel like yeah. it, no one tells me what to do, yeah, if I want to work, I don't work. <laughs> but the reality is, is because you're your own boss, yeah. when you're not working, you're actually not making any money. Yeah. Until you get to that point too, of course, when the business is really, really well established yeah. and it's kind of making money for itself. But in yeah. the beginning, it's not like you waking up at three o'clock in the afternoon. You're not going to get anywhere. No, you're you're still up early. You're probably working harder than the person who works the nine to five. Oh, yeah. Actually, let me take that away. It's not probably you are working harder than the <laughs> yeah. person working the nine to five. Yeah. But it's definitely more fulfilling when mm-hmm. you're able to accomplish your own things, right? Yeah, like mm-hmm. I mean, like I could see myself like just to give you an example, and I mean it's hard to give a day in a life. But you're yeah. right. Like the days that I'm not working, mm-hmm. I don't you know, I don't make any money. Yeah. Right. And if I'm sick, mm-hmm. like I don't have any benefits, you know, like there's, there's <laughs> yeah. no, and I, and that can be a really scary part of mm-hmm. it. Not knowing. Yeah. Um, and I know for me very early in the beginning, like, I guess my first like six months out, I was thinking mm-hmm. like, what did I just do? Right. But, um, kind of like a, a day in, in my life could be anywhere from, you know, starting at like 6 a.m sometimes i might if i I get do get to sleep in sometimes i I do love that i get to start my own day but even if i started at like 9 a.m you know Mm -hmm. um then i'll you know go to practices i'll be like i'm i work with a a, the ridgebacks so you know i get to go to practice and, and implement the mental skills there and then i've got like three clients after that but they're all over the place so i'm driving right and then by the time i've actually gotten back i have a couple more meetings <laughs> and then it's like 10 p.m and i'm thinking like i just did like <laughs> yeah you, you've been out there for 14 hours or whatever it like, is literally yeah. and and you know what like it doesn't feel draining. It doesn't feel like tiring. Of course, the driving here and there can get a little tedious. Right. But I mean, to be able to to have those days and then to have other days where I'm like solely devoted to like creation mm-hmm. or, you know, like, like getting more clients or things like that. Right. Like it's it adds a lot of variety, but mm-hmm. it also really like my days really fluctuate. Right. And I actually really love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say is is the biggest struggle that you've had starting your business? Honestly, I think 
getting your name out there is always going to be something that is very challenging. Right. Um, I've spoken to many successful people um, and ironically people who have run businesses for 20 years and I'll always be like, okay, like tell me the secret. And they're like, when I figure it out, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'm like, oh, you're 20 years in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, you got to give me something. Like you've been doing this, right? But I mean, like, I I think getting yourself out there is really the hardest thing to do. Uh, that's why podcasts and video series and are really great and awesome to do that. But you know, there's so many people that are like doing similar things or doing what you do. So. Mm not only just getting yourself out there, but really differentiating between you and like the next person is a huge difference. And we live in a very, a very competitive world. Like right. I do believe that, especially in professions like this, like mm -hmm. if you think about like therapists, for instance, which sometimes there are some similarities between mm -hmm. what we do, but we're not therapists. Yeah. Um, they, you know, like there's so many therapists out there, but they all, most of them, like have clients and have no problem right getting mm -hmm. clients so as much as it is like a competitive environment mm -hmm. um especially considering what we do i do also believe that there is enough out there it's right. just a matter of like again getting yourself out there um finding your like group of people they always mm -hmm. say like find a tribe you know yep. um and really just differentiating yourself between like what you bring versus what other people are bringing to the table and like what kind of what kind of mistakes have you made that you wish you could have avoided oh my gosh 